so because the Europeans is currently going on, I've been asked a whole load of questions about how it works, how I prepare for it, what needs to be done. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes just sharing with you from behind the scenes. Now, normally I would be in venue. So normally right now I'd be in Russia, uh, live in venue and would be set up and in the distance we'll be able to see the, the competition uh, and we'd have our desks with the TVs and, and, and all of the controls uh, right by us. But Obviously, with COVID, things were a bit trickier. I was due to go to London, uh, but was then given the opportunity to coach remotely. So that's what I'm doing. I'm set up uh, in a house here. We've got, we got the Wi-Fi connected. I've had to hardwire the cable. I can't risk doing it off Wi-Fi. Um, so i just share with you my background here. Let me get rid of these headset for a minute. Um, I've got two computer screens. The one behind me, right up here, that one's got the scoreboard on. So I can watch uh, the scoreboard live as it's happening. I've then got my laptop set up and that's connected directly to London and Paris. So the Eurosport offices are in London, uh, but everything's controlled remotely from Paris. So these guys tell me which uh, channel to log into uh, and I've got it all hooked up with the, the relevant technology. Um, so yeah, I've had, it, I've had to get all this set up. So at the start of each competition, I have to log into a specific channel. I have to log into a specific um, uh, frequency so I can hear on my headset um, so as you can see this is what's going out I think this is going out at the moment as uh, is possibly being shown this was highlights from yesterday this competition has already been and done and we've already done the commentary on it I don't listen to myself back on commentary and I certainly don't go looking on social media for for comments on what people think of my commentary I really couldn't care less if people don't like it they can press mute that's always an option um, so before a competition what do I need to do I need to do a sound check, uh, which is normally about an hour before competition, and that's roughly now, so I'm gonna have to do a, hence I've got these on, that's gonna have to be done shortly. Um, I've got here my schedule, so I've written down each category, times and days. Uh, I have to write down what, what frequencies I'm on, just so if I ever get cut off, I need to refer back to it quickly. Uh, for each category then, as you can see, this has appeared actually very recently. I've been waiting for this to come up. This is the start list for the next group, so let me get a bit closer and show you. <clears throat> so that tells me the lifters, their, their body weights, not that they matter anymore, and their starting weight. So I get that information probably earlier than anybody else will get. It'll be, it'll be in the venue, so the lifters will be able to see it. But um, I will have gone through all of the names and I would have done a bit of research. So I would have researched what those lifters' best lifts are in competition, uh, what their best performances are, uh, where they're from, ages. Uh, so we can make mention then if, if we've got juniors in the group or youth lifters. We also make a note of uh, current records, European world records, so that as lifters approach those kind of weights, we can be prepared to announce and keep, keep the viewers uh, switched on with what's going on. But I guess from my point of view, I'm deemed to be the expert when it comes to the weightlifting. David Goldstrom, who is my co-commentator, he's going to be uh, introducing the competition and keeping it running. So we have very different roles within commentary. David will introduce the athletes. He will share a bit of their background, what their bests are, um, any history, any other information he's managed to get from the team. The lifter comes onto the platform. We generally don't say anything then when they're lifting. And then lift goes to ground. David would normally give the first reaction and I would give the second. Now, particularly right now, because David and I are both commentating remotely, we can't see each other. We could hook up a WhatsApp call or a FaceTime call, but David needs his phone because he's also doing some of the production out in Russia. So that's not an option for us. So we're having to be really clear and communicate beforehand is in terms of who's going to be commentating on what and when so that we don't talk over each other. Now that's normally quite easy to do when we're sat next to each other. We can look at each other and you know when that person's going to speak. But at the moment it's proving a lot trickier. So this is my setup. I've got backups of all the leads. Um, as I say, I've got my, I've got emergency phone numbers. If I need to contact Paris, I can. If I need to contact the guys at Eurosport in London, I can. And, and fingers crossed, it goes smoothly from there. But if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to drop me a message. The yeah, best way is probably on Instagram, at Michaela Breeze. Um, and yeah, I'll happily answer any questions you've got. But that's it, really. A bit of behind the scenes. Uh, sound check I've got to do coming up in a second and, and all we're going to do is chat to Paris. I'm going to make sure I can hear them because they're going to give me cues in my ear. Uh, for example, when they're 
counting down to a commercial break. I need to be ready, David needs to be ready, and we need to make sure that we've wrapped up whatever we've started chatting about. And it's typical, normally I get a question thrown at me and then I hear the countdown, commercial break in five, four, three, two, one, and I've got to finish what I'm saying. So when we're commentating, if you hear us cut off a sentence pretty quickly, that's why. Anyway, I hope that's given you a bit of a, a background in terms of what goes on when commentating. As I said, normally we don't do it remotely, but COVID has forced us to. But maybe when we're back in venue, maybe at the Olympic Games, I'll be able to share a bit more of it then.